So we have a 2007 Toyota FJ Cruiser. And the trim piece has come off the top. When you look at these clips, there's four clips in total. And they're held in with these screws. So these screw in here, hold that in place, and they just fit in these square holes. And the new pieces have gaskets. So these are the new pieces. Retainer roof drip side finish mold. There's the number 75563-35010. Got these off of Am or off Toyota. And as you can see, they have these little duckbill looking things with a little gasket underneath. So that little gasket keeps the water from falling into those square holes. Here's the molding piece. Bought this about $250 Canadian on Amazon through a retailer. So there's those two clips on this side with these two stakes in the middle. I'll show you those in a second. And then two more clips on the end. So we'll be putting those clips in and then making sure that these two clips line up. Okay, I did have a quick look at it and these two clips do line up with those. So everything looks pretty good so far. We'll, uh... yeah, let's put this up here. We'll get this piece out. Um, these have rusted pretty bad and they're bent because the last person who did the windshield, I guess, just pried them up and they're not very straight. So I'm going to hammer these out, try and get these as flat as I can, use a, a wrench and uh, then I'm going to put some, uh, some trim clad paint on it just to uh, stop all the rust that's around these holes, clean it up a bit. Here's what the clip looks like. It's a solid piece and that gasket makes a waterproof seal against the square opening on the roof. So it has to maintain that water tightness and the way it goes in uh, when it's attached to the roof, you'll see it's got these little wings that push against it and then this lip under here that attach that uh, clips into this piece here. So as you get it in place and push it down, it'll lock itself in. That's I think why you need to buy these new uh, get replacement ones because when you look at these older ones, um, the, uh, the, the angle there may not be a hundred percent after you pry this thing off or pry the other trim piece off. Um, I guess over time they may become brittle. I was lucky these didn't, uh, snap off or anything. They're still in good shape. Um, one thing is, uh, I would recommend if you're going to buy these, uh, anyway from a Toyota dealer, get these screws. They're, uh, they're weird. Um, it's a uh, 10 millimeter. Uh, they almost look like uh, small uh, sheet metal screws, but um, uh, I looked through my whole collection of, of screws and everything. I couldn't find them, and they have to be a certain size because you can't um, go too far into this because if you break through on this side of this waterproof um, fitting here. Um, you could possibly have leaks because uh, although it will seal on the top here there's still a, a possibility that it'll, it'll leak past so i'm going to reuse the old screws unfortunately they're uh, um, 
not in good shape, but I don't want to um, wait around uh, to order these uh, screws or try and find a match for them. So I'll just put the old ones in and I'll give them a little, a little spray paint. Got the uh, white trim clad in there. These just popped right back in. They were pretty easy to do. And uh, simple 10 mil. Just lightly snug it down. Has to be too tight. I think if you if you snugged it down too tight, the whole thing starts twisting. So. This snug is good. And you can see it kind of, these clips do still wiggle a little bit, but that's okay. They're in there pretty good. I'll just give these a shot of spray paint on the heads of these screws and we'll go take care of the trim. So now we got to put a bead of silicone in four different spots. Actually it's a urethane adhesive. Uh, this is what they usually use to install windshields with. It asks for it specifically. I don't know if you can use uh, something else, but I figured I might as well go the whole nine yards here and get the proper stuff. This was uh, $25 Canadian. A little bit expensive if you ask me, but it does a job. Um, I've used it before. So basically you need to put two beads um, one bead across here, one bead across here, and then match it on the other side. So you need a bead across here and a bead across here. I selected the profile, um, basically cut the nozzle so that it's one centimeter deep by I think seven or eight millimeters in width and We'll, uh, we'll lay that bead down. So here are those beads. They're kind of conical in shape. And we'll uh, get this uh, pressed on to the clips and hopefully everything turns out okay. Managed to get it on. The, uh, had some issues with it, um, actually put a dent in, uh, in one part there. Uh, it's kind of a trial and error because I didn't really see any good videos on how to put this on. Um, one of the things you should do before you even start uh, putting the adhesive on is make sure these, uh, the tabs line up as well as the two center posts. Um, two center pins that they line up because every every uh, clip didn't line up properly so I had um, the black adhesive got over everything I used some brake clean to to get it off but it it made quite a mess and um, another thing to note when you um, Put the clips back on make sure there's ample room between the windshield and the clip edge because i think what was happening was there was some adhesive in the way and when the when this came down on it it couldn't go down far enough to clip in so that's where the hammer came in and um, kind of dented this little piece here unfortunately i won't be able to fix that um, it looks uh, looks and feels secure I uh, have to wait, uh, I think it's five hours for the adhesive to cure before I can drive at this temperature. But I'll, uh, I'll give it a, uh, a day. I'll uh, take it out tomorrow. But anyway, that's it. Um, it is on. 
and uh, I hope this video helps uh, some people when they uh, try and do this themselves. Thanks.